hello hello it is saturday is yours slow mine is definitely going to be slow i decided that okay so i had an absolute splendid week yesterday i finally got to release four patents <clears throat> and i was over the moon obviously the fame boss summer top is one of them um, she got published on Ravelry yesterday and then there was another crochet pattern, the Ireland shawl. That shawl is not new. I designed that shawl um, before, during, after a yarn tour to Ireland in 2017. And um, the yarn tour was amazing. If you are ever in Dublin, look up. This is knit. But don't go there with just a little bit of money. Take lots. That shop is, wow, it's something else. I spent a crazy amount of money there. So yeah, that shawl came from there. It was published on Ravelry and then I took it off and I reworked it and I had it retested and it was re-photographed this week and obviously republished. So it's back on Ravelry. It's a wonderful, um, the sample is made with three colors, but it's nice as a stash buster as well. You can easily use it as a stash buster. Every time the stitch pattern changes, the color changes as well. So there's no limitations. Don't hold back. Go as wild as you want. It will look beautiful. And um, then I also published two knitting patterns. The one is my little um, hat that I always wear, especially when my head was so cold during the winter. When I was um, when I shaved my hair still, I'm growing my hair a little bit. I don't know how long I'm gonna make it. Yesterday I had, the day before yesterday and yesterday I was seriously considering taking the clipper and just take it off. But uh, I'm still here. I'm still here. So this is my favorite hat, and we had a little competition last week for a name for this hat and eventually the one that got the most votes was the slow life slouch which i think is so fitting because yeah that's me this is my favorite hat it's the slow life and and it's really a slouchy hat you can um just put it on and, and let it slouch here at the back so it's a very relaxed hat it's very very comfy i wear these all the time in the winter so this one is on after many requests. People were really requesting this pattern for me from me on a fortnightly basis. Every second week or so I would get a request. That hat that you've got on in the video, where's the pattern for that? Where can I find the pattern? So there's it. It's the Slow Life Slouch. And then the one that I'm the most excited about was this little cowl thing that you saw when I did the road trip, when we did the road trip down to Cape Town. Um, man, oh man. When I got the idea, I thought this is crazy. I don't know if I would be able to do this with knitting. And I gave it a go. I knitted the cowl in the car. It was nice, mindless knitting because the pattern is extremely simple. It's not really a stitch pattern that you have to look at. It's um, I think 12 rows of stockinette stitch and three rows of reversed stockinette, something like that. But it's, it's, it is ridiculously easy. For a beginning knitter, you can make this. It's that easy. So um, I showed parts of it, but I wasn't sure whether the total concept is going to work. But here it is. This is now the finished one. So what you do is you take it by the brim and you give it a little bit of a shake. And that actually closes up the crown of the hat so you give it a bit of a shake and you put the hat on just like that uh, i hope you can see the crown and there you've got a hat now if you've got long hair and you have a ponytail you can wiggle your fingers in here into the crown and you can pull out your tail now i don't have a ponytail i've just got hair a little bit of hair so you can see there's a little bit of hair i've got the crown open or you can put your hands in and wiggle open the crown and give it a little bit of a tug and you've got a cowl. A very comfy cowl I might add. So this one also we had a competition for on the um, Ilona Facebook group 
And the name that got the most votes was The Hat Trick, which I think is flippin' genius. Because um, a hat trick is more something in three. You know, in cricket, when a bowler takes out three wickets straight after one another, he's got a hat trick. So there's a three involved. And I know, I think there's something like that in hockey as well. I'm not sure. But yeah, this is three. It's a hat, it's a ponytail hat, and it's a cow. And it all happens with a trick. So the hat trick, I absolutely love the name. So this little one is on YouTube as well. Ah, oh, YouTube, where do I come from? I'm on word. I need a slow Saturday, you see. Yesterday's excitement was just way too much. Okay, so she's on Ravelry. And um, I actually made a mistake in the pattern when I published it. I don't know where I got 400 grams of yarn from, but that was a total fucker up. Somebody sent me a message on Telegram early this morning to say, are you sure it's 400 grams for that hat? And I said, why do you think it's 400 grams? And she sent me a, a screenshot or a photograph of the pattern. I was like, what? I jumped out of bed and I ran to my computer and I quickly fixed it and I posted the update on Ravelry. I have no idea where the 400 came from. My mind has been, must have been wondering. This is only 100 gram, one hank only. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is this is light fingering. So it, it's a, a fingering yarn that gives you about 400 meters on a 100 gram hank. One hank, 400 meters of yarn. And you can make this little beauty. And it, <laughs> the photographer, when he finished the photos um, on Thursday, he said to me, I'm ordering two of those. I said, I don't knit for other people. He says, well, you're knitting for me now. <laughs> So somewhere I must still find time to make the photographer two of these. One for his wife and one for his daughter. But um, this is going to be just as popular with the men. It's all about the color of the yarn. If you choose a more um, masculine color, um, the men will love it just as much. So uh, I'm going to be play it safe. And I'm going to make the two for him when I eventually get to it. I'm not going to make it in a real girly or a feminine color because I know his sons are going to want to wear it as well. So at least then they can share it. Yeah, so this one, I'm so impressed with this one. I really, really, really like it. Give it a bit of a shake. And there's the crown. Man, it's so cute. <laughs> okay, so what am I working on? I am working on a sweater. A very informal sweater with two colors. I, I told you about it last week and um, I will show you a quick um, sneak peek. So it's going to be something like this. Different stitch patterns, different colors and very informal. They, I'm quite enjoying this one. And this is the last project that I will knit on my chow goo needles. Imagine that. Um, I've been getting immensely painful little red bumps on my fingers and um, it's been going for a couple of years already I went to the doctor once and I said to him look this and he said oh I think it's to do with stress so okay I tried Dr. Google for stress and rash and I couldn't find any any images that looked like what I'm getting and eventually I just said, well, okay, this is stress. So whenever I'm working on a new design, out comes the bumps. But, yeah, okay, I'm stressing about the new design, I suppose. And I kept on going. And then this last week when I started knitting again, actually in the car already, I said to my husband, my fingers are so sore, look at this. And I'm not stressing. I'm not stressing about this design. I'm enjoying every moment about it. Well, at that stage I was working on this and I was really enjoying it. I mean, I was on a road trip on vacation. And when I came back, this is the design that I started on and I'm enjoying this. I'm not stressed. And he looked at me and said, it's not stress. And I said, what do you mean? He says, I've been keeping an, an eye on this for a while now. It happens every time that you knit or crochet so much constantly I think your skin is reacting to the steel needles and at that moment a light bulb went on because 
years ago when I still had my yarn shop, I was working with the Ilona wooden crochet hooks, remember? And just um, somebody wanted the smaller sizes that we could not make in um, wood. We had to put a steel needle into the wood because the size was just too small. So we put a steel needle in and I used to test every Ilona hook before I sent it out to a customer. So each one of these hooks I had to crochet something with and I can remember at the time that the steel immediately caused an irritation and my left finger started acting up because when I crochet, I'm not going to do it with that one, the, the needle is rubbing, the hook is rubbing against my left hand index finger the whole time. And um, then I went and I bought the tulips and my fingers were acting up but I did not put one and one together. I was totally oblivious. I had Knit Pro Cubics and nothing happened and then I switched to Chagu for the sake of the cables and my hand started acting up again. So there is no nickel. I thought it might be a nickel allergy. Now with these steel hooks that could be the case. I'm not sure whether this is a 100% stainless steel hook or whether it's got nickel in. I really don't know. But I know Chagu does not have nickel in the hooks. Um, I'm not sure about tulip. I didn't, I didn't go research it and check it. So all I'm doing now is going back to the wooden implements. I'm going back to my Ilona crochet hooks. Um, I've got most. Uh, I gave mine all to my daughter. And then she immigrated to Sweden and, and she left it here in the storage. So I retrieved it from her storage this week. And she broke both the 3.5 millimeter hooks. So I just ordered two of those. So um, yeah, if you're interested in wooden hooks like these, I can still get them for you. The carpenter who made them for me who used to live with me on the farm. He is not far from me. He's about hmm, 12, 15 k's from me. He's close. And he still makes them. I ordered um, two from him this week. Um, I'll just, uh, I haven't even asked for the price. I'll just check the pricing with him. And um, I can actually. I'll make a plan to put it somewhere on an online shop somewhere. I'll, I'll, I don't really want to do it through my Ilona shop. I don't want to reactivate WooCommerce and the payment gateways and everything else. So what I'll rather do is I'll speak to somebody that's got a yarn shop that are fairly close to me or whatever and see if they want to stock the hooks then um, I'll give you the link where you can order these hooks from. Let me Give me a week or so to sort that out. I know there are always somebody asking where can I get that hook. Now the reason why I made the hook like this way back when um, I used to have a straight old-fashioned hook. Now let me take one of these thin ones out just for the sake of showing. I used to have a very th uh, a normal straight old-fashioned aluminium hook and I used to hold my hook uh, pencil grip. With other words, the way you would write with the pencil, you hold your hook like that. I'm going to turn a little bit so that you can see. And I used to depress my thumb like this when I was crocheting and I got there you can now clearly see what my thumb is doing you see this and um, my hand would start hurting my thumb would be very fatigued after a while but I would get a pain down here in this region and I was googling at that stage and people were um, talking about the full hooks and I actually ordered a full hook from America and by the time the hook landed here that hook cost me nearly 2,000 Rand. Nobody in South Africa stocked them at that stage. I had to pay import duties and taxes and whatever so it was a ridiculously expensive hook. It's what I pay. You can pay for a full set of Knit Pro needles now. And I realized immediately that I had to change my grip from pencil to knife grip, holding it like this instead of like that. 
and I did that. It took me half an hour to get used to it. It really, it isn't a big thing. People, oh no, I can't crochet like this. Oh man, you can, if you want, you can. Um, and the reason what happened is I took the full hook and the straight hook and I went to a lady who crochets, but she's a hand therapist in Pretoria. All she does is rehab on hands that has been um, operated on joint replacements for severe arthritis and that kind of thing. And I said to her, I want to understand why is the straight hook causing the pain here, but the full hook is not. And she looked at the way I crochet and she explained it to me. She said, when you suppress your thumb like that, that joint causes pressure here or tension or yeah, pressure, I suppose. And that joint places a lot of pressure here. And this is where arthritis starts in the hands normally. So crochet is actually a lifestyle trigger for arthritis if you don't hold your hook properly. And from that day on, whenever I would give a course, if I saw somebody crocheting like this with a suppressed thumb, I would speak to them about it. If you, if you can crochet pencil grip without suppressing your thumb, good on you, you can carry on, it's no problem. But if you, the moment you suppress your thumb like that, you have a problem. And she explained it to me like this. If you hold your hand like this, you have an arch here in your index finger and you have an arch in your thumb. And both of these should stay arched while you crochet. You shouldn't suppress your thumb or your finger that much. It should stay like that. So I started working with the fills in a, in a knife grip, but it was extremely uncomfortable to me initially. I got the grip right in about half an hour, but the hook was too small. It kept um, um, poking me here in the in in the end of my palm i didn't like the feeling i wanted a longer hook and a slightly fatter one at that and that is where the ilona hooks came from i went to a carpenter and i said look this is what i want and he made it longer so it actually sticks out here it doesn't poke me here and he made them a bit fatter as well so it's for a more comfortable grip and since then i've been as happy as can be why i changed to tulips I have no idea. So I'm going back to the wooden hooks. They are long, they are fat, and they are extremely nice to work with. It's an inline hook. It's not a tapered hook. Uh, what does that mean? E let me get a fat one out. Maybe I can show you with a very fat one. If you hold your hook like that, facing you now, not me. If you hold the hook like that with the hook facing you, and the hook, uh, and you compare it to the shaft here, if the hook is fatter than the shaft, it's a tapered hook. But if it's in line with the shaft like this one, it's an inline hook. The other difference, if you turn the hook sideways like this, now it's going to be difficult for you to see. Let me put it next to my, yeah, so that you can see it on here. If you look at the shape, of the um, the actual groove where you catch the yarn your tapered hooks has a very um, it goes in horizontally and diagonally out where the inline hooks usually go up a little bit and round it more and it comes down so if you tend to lose your loop while you're crocheting you're probably crocheting with a tapered hook and it's not suitable to your style so mine are all in line. They've got a nice deep rounded groove so that you don't lose the loop. So I'm going back to the Ilona hooks. And I'm also going back to wooden needles, um, knitting pins. So this is the last um, project that I'm knitting on my Chargoos. I've actually put my set up for sale. Somebody said they want it, but they can only pay it beginning next month. So I'll hold it for her and see what happens. So I've decided, I've looked at a lot of, of knitting pins. Um, Chagu is bringing out a very nice hardwood set, but it won't help me at all because the pins, the, the, the ends of the knitting pins are steel. I don't want steel, I just want wood. What I would like to have is um, lantern moon. Oh, 
they are so beautiful and the reason why I would like it they have the same cable type of cable that Chagu has it's a wood uh, it's a steel cable encased in nylon so when you take the cable out uh, even though you've coiled it up tightly, the moment you release the coil and you drop the cable, it just hangs. It hasn't got a memory. St uh, plastic cables are, they tend to keep the kink and it's not nice to, to knit with. Lantern Moon has that same steel cable structure that Chagu has and it's got the swivel cable that Chagu is going to come out with now in their new um, I can't remember what the name of the new Chagu is, but anyway, it's the new hardwood set with the swivel cables. So Lantern Moon has got that. I would love to order that. But to bring that in from America is going to cost me five and a half thousand rand. And that is without the international courier. That is the price and I could calculate the import duties and taxes. I do not have the shipping included in that. That is way too much. I can't do that. So, I sat and I had a long talk with myself and the talk span over two days. For two days I was considering the lantern moon. And eventually I said to myself, Hilda, you've never worked with a swivel cable before. You are used to needles with cables that do not swivel. So get over it. So I decided to rather purchase the Knit Pro Ginger set that's coming out anytime now in South Africa. It's a wooden needle. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to like the cables. I'm hoping and praying I will like the cables because the ginger set is only going to cost me 2,120 Rand and I'm going to buy it at Yarn. It's an online store in South Africa. The name is Yarn, the Afrikaans Yarn. So it's J A R N, yarn.ca.za. They are taking pre orders at the moment for the, um, the ginger knit pro set. I'm going to go with that. So this one is the last knitting project on my steel chargers. I have to finish it now. I can't switch mid project. Um, if I do that, the tension is definitely going to be different and that's not going to work. So I will have to finish that one. Ta -da -da -da. Okay, now look at this beautiful box I got. Let me just put this crochet hook away before she goes rogue. Okay. Moya sent me their um, tot box. It's got a tot of every single color in the new Moya color range is in the box. Man, it's delightful. Now, Moya went through some ups and downs with their colors. Initially when Moya came out, their colors were very chalky. <clears throat> there were a lot, uh, a lot of undyed spots or lightly dyed spots in the yarn. Some people liked it, some people didn't. I was sort of sitting on the fence. I couldn't be bothered. It was okay. And then they had to move their studio when COVID started. They moved the studio from Gordon's Bay to Somerset West. And the change in water made a huge difference in the color plus the dye supplier also changed the the formula so the dye powder also was different and people in the market were very upset i know when i started originally when i did celtic knots i was going to do it with moya and all my testers had bought their kits and I bought mine, but there was so much color difference at that stage that we all just got very upset with Moya and we threw it out and we started over with color spun. And I'm happy to report that Moya seems to have sorted their problems out. I actually paid a visit to their studio when we were down in Cape Town last month, this month, this month, sorry. It's not May yet, this month. And I made uh, a point of checking the colors on the shelves to see how consistent they are. Now, obviously, 
no dyer can can be 100% consistent between dye lots. It's, it's an unfair expectation to have. Climate uh, plays a role, the, the temperature for the day plays a role, the water plays a role, and you can't regulate what water you get from your freaking tap, especially in South Africa. I mean, our municipalities are just pathetic. So all of that plays a role, but at least if you can have um, the same in one dye lot, I'm happy with that. That's reasonable to me. So this is the full, full spectrum of Moya colors in a box. And I am so happy to have received this because um, I've got this cowl that's growing in my head. And... Yesterday I posted a poll on Ilona and I was so surprised at the results. I asked on the Ilona Facebook group, um, what shade blanket do you prefer, square or rectangle? And I was really, really expecting square to be the most popular choice. And it isn't. What did I do with my phone? I haven't got my phone there, so I can't. I wonder what the poll is right now. Hang on, let me check. I've got my computer here. Um... Let's quickly go to Facebook and see what is the um, what is the poll results right now. At the moment, there's a hundred and five votes for a rectangle blanket, and only ten votes for a square blanket. I am. Stunned. I really didn't expect it. And the reason why I'm all asking all of these questions on polls on Ilona Slow Life Group is to give you exactly what you want when I do a cull. Because obviously people are not going to take part in the cull if the cull isn't to their liking. So, okay. So the top box couldn't have come at a better time. I actually... I've, I'm, I'm battling my OCD at the moment. On the one hand, I want to throw out the entire box and start playing with the colors. And on the other hand, they look so pretty, sitting all in neat little rows in, in from light to darker in one color sequence. And, and I know I'm not going to be able to put them back like this again. So I'm just looking at it, but I, <laughs> I have to throw them out eventually, don't I? So what better time than now? Okay, so... This is what I want to talk to you about. I also, oh, it looks absolutely divine. I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture for you later on. <laughs> Post a picture for you. Okay, so normally when I do a cow like this, I start with two or three neutral colors. That will be the same throughout all the kits because that's the only way that I can sort of foresee what each project will look like because if I make five or six kits and give, make it available to you to purchase, obviously you want to see what the finished item is going to look like in that kit. So we normally get a tester in each kit color. Okay, so I would then probably go with something like, this is a neutral. Okay, let's look for, there is a jet. This is a nice gray. And let's... Um, for the people that don't necessarily like grey, let's pair it up with a more earthy colour. Sand is too close. Um, biscuit. That's nice. Now you see, now I've got three neutral colours there. There's a, a natural and biscuit and jet. So it's a, a natural and a greyish one and a brownish one. Okay, so that will probably... I'm not saying this is the final kit colors. I'm just playing to show you where my mind is going. Now, in one poll, I asked, do you want uh, color-specific kits or do you want multicolored wild kits? And again, the answer shocked me. People said that they would rather have a color-specific kit. So, let's look at, um, let's take purplish. Okay, so there's a, that one is just called purple and this one is called sangria it's more of a violet but it, it ties in nicely with the purple and this one is geisha it's 
So now I've got that. Pretty, pretty, pretty. So let's do another one. I'll photograph these later just to give you an idea. Just We're just playing at the moment. Let's look at green for instance. Let's take um, an avo and an oregano and maybe a little bit brighter one. This is apple. See? Now this is how I normally build my kits. I don't know. I think this will work for what I've got in my head. So this blanket that I've got in my head, what I want to do is give you, for instance, three or four size options. So a baby blanket, a single bed blanket, um, queen size, and a king size, or something like that. Because everybody don't want the same thing you might want to make it for a baby that's coming and Susie wants to make it for her granddaughter who's sleeping on a single bed that type of thing so I want to make the pattern adjustable so that you can make it the size you want we did the same thing when I did ready steady ripple ready steady ripple was available in different kit sizes and that is what I want to do so I want to offer different color choices and different size choices as well and this is my concept for this blanket it's going to be wild and wonderful it's going to include uh, ripple components elements it's going to contain motive elements it's going to contain um, normal straightforward back and forth in row elements so I want to combine all of those and make something beautiful. That's what I've got in my head and the picture is keeping me awake at night. So I need to start building the kits. I actually want to start working on that um, when my knitting is finished. Although I've got another knitting jersey that, that I want to do but I can do the two together because why I say I can do the two together, I always have a big project and a small project or a difficult project and an easy project because one I can take with me whatever is small and I can take it on the go and work in it in the car and whatever and I also want something that I can do in company where I don't have to think because me um, that's the reason my mother originally taught me to knit and crochet was to keep my hands busy because I've got Asperger's. I was always, my hands were just, I couldn't sit still and it was driving my father insane. And my mother said, let me teach you to knit and crochet so that you can sit still. If I go to church and I have to sit in church with nothing, I don't hear anything. I have to concentrate so hard on sitting still because I can't. I start stimming, then my foot starts shaking, then the whole bench is shaking and everybody in the church is shaking and it doesn't work. So I've, <laughs> I actually found a church where I said to the preacher, look, I'm going to knit and crochet in your church. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. I said, great, then I'll come. So I take my knitting to church. I sit at the back and I knit. Then, then my hands are busy and I can listen and I'm happy. Now that jersey that I want to do after this one is that type of project. It's The stitch pattern is not going to be difficult um, because I want to make it for a male. It's going to be easy, it's going to be repetitive, it's going to be one color only, it's going to be a formal type of jersey for a male or a unisex. Well it has to be unisex because I'm going to wear it and I can take that anywhere and I want to start working on this when I'm at home because dragging an entire blanket out, no thank you, I'm not going to do that. So, I'm going to launch the kits, or I'm going to decide on the kits. I want to still this weekend. And then I'm going to put a call out to testers to see what we can get going. Okay, now, in South Africa, if you test for me, you have to test with the official kit, which will be Moya. Uh, 
Moya is kind enough to give us a discount for the tester, so you will pay a little bit less than you would pay for Moya in the shop for the kit. But you have to commit, you have to purchase the kit yourself, I can't give it to you. And you have to keep up, and you have to finish. It's not for sissies. Don't go halfway and then say to me, I don't feel like this anymore. Then I'm going to have a freaking iffy fit. For overseas people, <clears throat> I think it was last week or the week before, I asked for your input. If you're in Europe or if you're in America and you can think of a small or medium enterprise like Moya, that kind of size, a mother and a daughter or whatever, that does their own cotton, that would be willing to collab with us. I would love it because then we could maybe get um, somebody in Europe and somebody in the US, uh, somebody in America, uh, Australia maybe, that could make kits there so that you don't have to pay this massive import duties, taxes and international shipping. I don't know if that's going to work. I have no idea. It's just a thing that crossed my mind. Maybe it will work, maybe it won't work, but we'll see. Okay, so that's about everything from me. But I so would like to do a boho one. <laughs> I had six colors just now, didn't I? Tell me that doesn't look delightful. Huh? That's what I like. My mother said she thinks I've got Bollywood blood. <laughs> I will really like this. Dang, man. Maybe my, we must have a wild and wonderful kick in there as well. <laughs> anyway, okay. That is all from me for today. Yeah. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Have a mindful weekend as well. I uh, said to the Afrikaans group yesterday, um, when we wrote the first and the second crochet book, the second book, um, Yakul and Ward Hill, the lady that was co-authoring, she did all the trauma stories. She came up with an Afrikaans word for mindfulness. She called it indachtigheid. It's beautiful. And what I said to the people yesterday, you know, sometimes we sit here, we are crocheting on something that's absolutely beautiful. We are creating this masterpiece in our hands, but we're not appreciating it. We are worrying about something that's coming up next week. And what if you die tonight? Then you won't see next week and you've missed the day as well. So don't let the worries of tomorrow steal away the mindfulness and enjoyment of today. Today, enjoy what you're doing. Do it with... with um, all your heart, enjoy it, treasure it, appreciate it, be grateful for it and let tomorrow come in its own time with its own worries. Tomorrow we will worry about tomorrow. Today we just appreciate what we have today. I hope you have a blessed week and um, yeah, give me some comments um, wherever you see this video. You're welcome to comment. Whether you're seeing it on YouTube, you can comment on YouTube, you can comment on Facebook, wherever you see it on Anyway, um, I would love to hear from you, so enjoy your week. <laughs>